Will you pray with me? Lord, I want to thank you for the opportunity you've given me to share life with members of your flock here at Christ Church. I ask that you would be in the words of my mouth and be with us in the meditations of our hearts. Lord, I also ask that you help us be present with others this week as we go out and do the work you've prepared for us to do. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning. Today's a, a special Sunday for me because I get to stand up here and, and you know, talk to you guys really here. Um, for those of you who don't know me or those watching online, my name is Zach Wolf. I'm a fellow here at Christ Church Anglican. Uh, I get to come here and really learn, you know, boots on the ground, you know, what's happening in parish life. Because in seminary, we're talking about ideas and lofty things that sometimes don't mesh well when, you, when you're out there in the field. So a little bit more about me. Um, I know some of you I've talked to, you know this, but I served 11 years active duty in the Air Force. I was an enlisted photojournalist. So during that time, I got to meet a lot of great chaplains. Some a little questionable, but most of them have been really good chaplains. But there's one thing that a chaplain said to me that stuck with me since, since he said it when I asked him about the ministry that he does. For those of you who don't know, I'm also in the chaplain candidate program, getting ready to go into the U.S. Army as a chaplain candidate. But I heard a lot of descriptions from different chaplains over the years about the care they provide. Usually it ranged from counseling to spiritual care. But this chaplain said something that blew my mind. He said that his ministry was a ministry of presence. We see in our gospel today, Jesus is modeling for us this ministry of presence. In verses 34 and 35, it says, When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, because they were like a sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things, and it grew late. His disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the hour is now late. Do you hear that? It was late. Yet here Jesus was still with them, teaching and talking to these folks that came to this desolate place to hear him. It says that Jesus saw these people coming to hear him teach, and he had compassion on them, a move of love. Then he began to teach them. He saw their need for the word of God, and he began to dive in right where they needed it. Jesus was spending time with these people. And what we just read, Jesus saw this multitude of people, and he had compassion on them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. I want us to think about that for a moment. My priest back in Nicholasville, Kentucky, he grew up near a sheep farm. So he's told us some firsthand accounts about uh, sheep and some of his homilies that he's given over the years. One of the things he said is, not only do the sheep smell really bad, but they're not the most intelligent creatures. They're defenseless and easy prey for predators. This is why a shepherd is needed. Someone to look over them and protect them. Someone to be with them. Think about the good shepherd homilies you've heard over the years or in Sunday school. Describing Jesus and all that he does for us, his people, his sheep. Why does Jesus do this? One of the answers is right here in our text. Compassion. In our Old Testament reading in Isaiah 57, verse 15, it says, For thus says the one who is high and lifted up, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place, and also with him who is of a contrite and lowly spirit, to revive the spirit of the lowly, and to revive the heart of the contrite. God says, even though he is high and dwells in the holy place, he also dwells with us. He has compassion on us and brings us healing. He is with us. In our New Testament reading, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 through 22, it says, So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone and whom the whole structure 
being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. We see the compassion of God spelled out for us, especially as Gentiles, being brought into the sheepfold by the good shepherd, Jesus. He is with us. In the psalm, in verse 24, it says, For he's not despised nor abhorred the lowest state of the poor. He's not hidden his face from him, but when he called unto him, he heard him. And then in verse 26, the poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek after the Lord shall praise him. May your hearts live forever. We see God reaching out to the poor and lowly and not hiding his face. And the poor will eat and be satisfied, all pointing back to giving God glory. All that we do, the compassion we have for others, and the actions fueled by that compassion, this ministry of presence should be for the glory of God. Amen? While discussing our readings today with my priest back home, he said something that really struck a chord with me. He said, service tends to be always about what I can do for you. So it ends up being othering and can be condescending. This idea of othering is that we are better off than them, so we help. But in doing so, we put them in a lower class than us. This, this othering is the barrier between us and them. My priest went on to say, but being present to other people encourages vulnerability and mutuality. That is the key to break this barrier. Being present is about vulnerability and mutuality. Think of the old proverb. If you give someone a fish, you feed them for a day. But if you teach them to fish, you feed them for a lifetime. So you can meet their immediate need, the fish in this proverb's case, but what does that do? It'll be consumed and they'll be left wanting more. When you teach someone to fish, you're spending time with them, instructing them, sharing life together. You're being present. Isn't that what Jesus called the disciples to do? To come follow him? Learn from him, be present with him. There's an illustration in a book that I read that I really love. It involves the Lord's table and says that there are multiple spaces where this table is practiced in three different circles. We've got the close circle, the dotted circle, and this half circle. So the Lord's table in the close circle is what we experience every Sunday when we come up here and receive the body and blood of our Savior. But there's a step we all take before we come up here. We ask ourselves if we are under full submission of Christ and if there's any enmity between ourselves and anyone around this table. There's vulnerability in this. And if we find that we are not in submission to God or have a quarrel with someone, it takes courage to confront it and make it right. But why is this step important? One reason is what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 28 and 29. Paul says, Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. Did you hear that? Whew. That's a pretty serious reason right there. We make ourselves right with God and others so that we do not eat and drink condemnation on ourselves. But there's another reason. It's to prepare us for the ministry of presence. In conversations I've had with Father Andrew and Father Morgan, we've talked about how no one can give others what they have not received themselves. Is not the Eucharist exactly that? Jesus is present with us in the sacrament. We are vulnerable to God and others to prepare us to give that presence throughout the week. Moving on to the, the dotted circle. This is the second circle, the Lord's table. is this circle of extension of the Lord's table to our neighborhoods. But you may be asking, why is it dotted? It's because Christians gather around this table and around Christ's presence, and it's dotted with openings where strangers are welcomed in. 
The author of the book I've read actually uses our gospel reading today to illustrate this. The disciples are the Christians gathered around Jesus, and the people from all the towns gather around through these dotted openings. Jesus appoints the disciples as hosts when he tells them, you give them something to eat. Of course, the disciples are dumbfounded. How are they supposed to be hosts for all these people? There is no way we can feed all of them. We don't have 200 denarii lying around. Where where are we going to get this food for these people? But Jesus then shows them what it means to be a host. He tells them to bring what they have. And in this case, it's five loaves and two fish, which he takes, blesses, breaks, and gives out for distribution. Does this sound familiar? Do you see the Eucharistic celebration in these words? For us, we host by not taking control of the table, but we enable the presence of Christ to meet everyone that is at this table. Like the disciples, we bring what we have to Jesus, and we ask him to take, bless, break, and give what we have to those around our dotted dotted circle table. One way you might do this is opening up your home for meals that that meet weekly. Something that someone could easily invite a stranger to or a visitor. In those meals, you sit with one another and spend time together. Ultimately, the ministry of presence is recognizing Christ's presence amongst you and those who are with you. This is important for all three circles. The last circle is that of the half circle. This circle invites us as Christians to reach the hurting and marginalized that may or may not be in our direct neighborhood. We come to these places imitating Christ and allowing Christ to work in us and through us. We rely on Christ's presence through the Holy Spirit to the glory of God the Father in being with these people. This is where we enact what Father Andrew talked about last week, full dependence on God. And we reach these hurting folks and those who are suffering and have compassion and we're present with them. This takes vulnerability, but this is how the ministry of presence works. The barrier is broken Connections are made. And above all, God is glorified. So COVID has been a unique time in the world we live. I think we can all say that. Uh, We've been shut in and social distancing for so long, it's become the new norm. We've had to get creative through things like social media and video conferencing just to maintain any social interaction not to mention to continue our worship. Last year, I had the privilege of leading a Bible study of James over Zoom with some of the folks here at this church. It was difficult, whether it was technology issues or not really getting that in-person interaction. But I was grateful for the opportunity. I will say that going through 1 Samuel together on Wednesday nights has been great being able to see everyone face to face and have that real interaction. It's been really encouraging for me, and I hope it's been encouraging for those who who have attended also. It's something I've needed since the beginning of that very first quarantine. I'd argue that as this COVID pandemic winds down with the help of God, we step closer to defeating it. This is something everyone will be needing. As this pandemic prayerfully comes to an end, we as Christians have a unique opportunity set before us. While our lives may not look like they did before, the people in our lives will still be there, but not just them. Others also who may be suffering or wanting something. That something is something we can give. This ministry of presence launches from the presence of Christ in our own life. Just as God has shown us compassion, we are challenged to show compassion to those in need and spend time with them. 
not only to meet their need, but to be with them, teach them, show them Jesus. As we get ready to receive from the Lord's table, my prayer is that you would remember this table as we go out into our neighborhoods, among the hurting and the marginalized, and we fully submit to God and we become imitators of him. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name, amen.